Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video. In this video, we're gonna be testing this really cool product. This allows you to charge your power station from your car alternator and solar panels at the same time for up to 1000 watts of input. Now, anybody who's familiar with charging a large power station like this off a 12 volt battery will understand that it charges very slowly. For example, if you look at the screen here, we are charging at 100 watts input and this is simulating charging from your vehicle. Now, in order to charge this, it's going to take over 15 hours at that speed, which is a very, very long time. And that's where this product comes in. This is the eTaker F1000. Now, th what this does is it boosts the voltage of this battery up to 42 volts to allow the power station to charge at 500 watts from your alternator or starter system. Now, what's really cool is this has a second input, which is a solar input, which adds an additional 500 watts, so you can charge your power station, if it's capable, at up to 1,000 watts. Now looking at the side of the converter, you have your car input here and your solar input here. Now for the car charging, you have an XT90 connection, and it supports 12 and 24 volt batteries. It has that voltage range of 12 to 30 volts. There's also a mode button here that allows you to charge between 300, 400, and 500 watts, and we'll be testing the efficiency of those charging modes here in a minute. Now for the solar input, this is an XT60 connection. It supports 12 to 48 volts, and it has an amperage input limit of 20 amps. Each of these are capable of 500 watts. Now this converter is completely built with aluminum. You have some exhaust fan holes right here. The entire thing is covered with these heat sink cooling fins. And then on this side, you have your air intake, a power switch, and also the XT60 output. Now I briefly want to talk about the output specs for this unit and what power stations this will work with. So this is rated for 42 volts output at 25 amps. So if your power station has a 60 volt input limit, this will work just fine. Now in order to get the full 1000 watts, your power station will have to have a pretty high amperage input limit. For example, the Blue Eddy AC240 here this one accepts up to 21 amps input, so we won't be able to get the full 1000 watts, but we can still benefit from the dual input. Now, if you have a power station that's a little bit smaller or has a lower amperage input limit, that's just fine. The power station will limit the amperage automatically, but you just won't see the full 1000 watts. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna test first with this power station. I'm gonna discharge it a bit. We'll test to see how efficient this is and how it works, and then we'll take it outside and do some real world testing. Okay guys, I'm excited to test out the eTaker F1000. I've kind of set up a lab here where I have the ability to test the efficiency and how this actually functions. So I have a 12 volt battery connected to the car input, and then I have it connected up to the Blue Eddy AC240. Now that we have everything connected up, you turn it on by flipping this power switch right here. So you can have this connected up to your starter battery all the time, it won't pull any power, and then it turns on if you flip on this switch. Now once it turns on, you'll have a light indicating the mode or charging speed that it's in. For example, right now we're seeing 300 watts output. If you want to change that, you push and hold it. And then you just tap to change between each mode. And then you just leave it on the mode that you want and it'll save. Now we have this set to 300 watts charging speed. And if you look at the power station screen, you can see we're charging right around 320 watts. In my first test, I want to see how efficient this charger is by measuring the input power and comparing it to the output power. We have the ability to measure the voltage and amperage of the power going through the input wires. And we also have the ability to do that on the output wires. And if we compare them, we can see the efficiency. So voltage output of the battery is 13.15 volts. Using my clamp meter to measure the amperage going through this wire, we are measuring right around 26 amps. So by doing simple math, voltage times amperage, it gives us 341 watts going into the converter. So now let's measure the power going out from the converter. With an inline voltmeter, I'm measuring right around 39 volts. Using my clamp meter to measure the amperage, we are getting around 8.15 amps. So the voltage times amperage for the output side is 317 watts. So it was 341 watts going in, 317 watts going out. So a total efficiency of around 92.9%. Now I'd say those numbers are fairly accurate. The converter is just a little warm to the touch. It also has a built-in fan. It's not very loud. Let's see if the microphone will pick it up. 
So now we know the 300 watt mode works just fine. You can see we're charging still around 320 watts. Let's see how the 400 watt mode does. So we just swapped it over to 400 watts. And pretty quickly it jumps up to 412 watts. So the 400 watt mode works just fine. Let's swap it up to 500 watts. So it's saved here. And now you can see we're getting close to 500 watts. So right around 492 watts on the screen of the Blue Eddy. Now I also wanted to measure the efficiency when this is set to 500 watts. Usually when you turn up the power on these, they get a little less efficient. Now I measured this all off screen to save on time, but I got 542 watts going into the converter and 490 watts going out to the power station, which gives us right around 90.4% efficiency. So just a little bit less efficient as you have this turned up to 500 watts. Now the fans are a little bit louder now that this is turned up to 500 watts. Let's see how loud this really is. Now since the F1000 supports dual inputs, I also want to test the solar charging input. Now this has a voltage range of 12 to 48 volts up to 20 amps. So I have my adjustable power supply connected into it. I have it set to 40 volts and 15 amps. So let's see how much power we can get into the converter. Now my adjustable power supply is bouncing between constant current and constant voltage mode, but the power numbers are pretty similar. So we're seeing around 589 watts and all the way down to about 540 watts. So it's jumping between those two levels. And then if you look at the screen on the power station, it's going from 530 watts all the way up to about 560 watts. So if we take the peak input of 561 watts of the power station and divide that by the peak output of 589 watts, that gives us right around 95.2% efficiency while using solar input on the converter. Now my final test indoors, I wanna test with the dual input. So the 12 volts and the solar at the same time to see how much power we can get going into the AC240. Now this is not ideal because this converter can put out up to 25 amps and the Blue Eddy AC240 can take 21 amps. So we probably won't get the full 1000 watts, but let's just see what happens. So both the adjustable power supply and the battery have been supplying power to the Blue Eddy. We're seeing a peak of around 852 watts input. So that's about as much power as we're gonna see on this power station. Now it is jumping around just a little bit um, it seems that it does not like this adjustable power supply. So I am excited to kind of take this outside and test with a real solar panel. And that's just sometimes what we get when we try to use test equipment instead of the real deal. So we do see a peak of around 852 watts, which is pretty decent from a dual input perspective. Well, let's see what the real world results can get us. Okay guys, here I am outside. I have my truck that's gonna be connected up to the F1000 and also a 400 watt solar panel so we can test kind of the real world uh, results of what you should expect when using this. Let me bring the camera in a little bit closer so you can see how it's set up. So let me walk you through this basic setup. We're using the Blue Eddy AC240 again and we have the F1000 right here. Now for the car input, my truck I wired a six aug cable coming directly from the battery. So that's already ran to the back. So I'm using that connection point for the car charging input. So that's the XT90 going in right here. Now for the solar charging input, I just have a basic solar extension cable going to this 400 watt port here. This is a residential class 400 watt panel. It is angled properly at the sun. And then for the output of the F1000, I'm using the stock XT60 cable. That's going to an XT60 to MC4. And then that is using the stock solar cable for the Blue Eddy AC240. Now for my first test, I wanted to see what would happen if you have both power connections plugged in and the power switch turned off. Does it pass through solar to the power station? And the answer is no, I have the power switch turned off and there is no power going into the power station even with both of these sources connected. So if you have it off, you don't need to worry about power going through into the power station. 
So my next test, I want to flip the unit on and see if it pulls power from the alternator setup, even with the engine not running. Now, this is kind of a safety feature. You do not want it to pull power from your starter battery when your engine's not running. Now, in the owner's manual, it does state that it's going to pull power at 12.5 volts or higher. And you can see my battery sitting at 12.4 volts, so this should not start charging from the alternator. It should only take power from solar. So let's turn this on and we'll see what happens. So if we look closer at the screen, you can see that we are charging with the solar panel right now. We do have a few high clouds and a bit of haze today, so we aren't getting full power from the solar panel, but it is not charging from the car, which is good, and it's charging from the solar panel. So now we know to, what to expect from the solar panel in these conditions. Let's go ahead and start the truck up and see if we can get more power. Now I've zoomed in a little bit so you guys can see, but we are getting 13.4 volts. It's jumping around a little bit, but that's what we're measuring from the battery through this long run of wire. So we are getting a little bit voltage drop through this and that's because this has started charging. So I have it set to the 300 watt level and let's see what we're getting on the power station. Now, if we look closer at the screen, you can see that we're getting a combined power of 630 watts. So we are getting a little less than 300 watts from the solar panel and we are getting a little bit more from the 300 watt car charging setting. So it is combining the power to give us you know, 630 watts. Now I like that this has the ability to adjust the charging speed. I have this set at 300 watts right now, which should be fine for most vehicles. Now, if you have a larger truck or SUV, you can turn this up to 500 watts and not damage your alternator uh, or starter setup. You will have to kind of think about um, how big is your alternator and how much power do you want to pull from it. 300 watts should be fine for most vehicles. The 500 watt setting, I would recommend a larger SUV or a truck. So now I'm gonna test with this turned up to 500 watts and we'll see how much power we're getting on the screen. So now I have it turned up to the 500 watt charging level and you can see that we are charging at almost 800 watts input, which would be about 500 watts from the charger and 300 watts from the solar panel. So we are basically getting max power output with the current setup. Well, now that we know that this unit works on a larger power station with a higher amperage input limit, I wanna test with a small power station. This is the Anchor C1000. It supports 60 volts input up to 12.5 amps and it's software limited to 600 watts. So I wanna connect this up to the Anchor C1000. It's really easy with the XT60 port. And we'll see how many watts we can get input on this. So if you see on the screen right here, we are getting 527 watts input. Now, if we do the math, this puts out around 42 volts and this power station has an amperage input limit of 12.5 amps. So this is right around the number that we should be seeing for the maximum power on this power station. So you can see it works with a smaller power station as well to combine solar and car charging together. Now I've been letting this run for a little bit longer here. I've reduced the charging speed on the uh, converter down to 300 watts from the alternator. And I've been watching what happens and it seems to prioritize solar input first and then it fills in the rest with the alternator charging. For example, I measured about 16 amps coming from these wires here at 13 volts. That's around 200 watts. And we were getting around you know, 300 watts from that solar panel and that gives us the 500 watts here. So even though I have it set to 300 watts on the converter, it's actually only pulling 200 watts and the rest is coming from solar. So it does appear to give priority to the solar input when you have both plugged in. So now I've shut off the truck and I just wanted to make sure that it stopped pulling from the alternator. And looking at the screen, it actually did stop charging. We are now just getting around 250 watts from solar and that's because we have a cloud coming in right now, just right on the edge. So it is good to see that whenever you turn off your engine, it's going to stop pulling power from your alternator and it will just charge from solar. Now, some people may be wondering why would you wanna even purchase a device like this? Well, if you think about it, most power stations only have one DC charging port. So that means you have to choose car charging or solar charging. Well, this device here, because it has dual inputs, allows you to combine both of those charging sources into one and then feed it into that single DC charging port on your power station. So instead of just choosing one or the other, you can have double the power input, especially when you are in an overlanding scenario, if you're in a van life scenario, or if you're just on a road trip camping and you wanna charge with 
uh, your alternator while you're driving and then have solar panels connected in and charging whenever your engine's not running and you don't wanna mess with any wires or swapping inputs, this is a really cool device. Now I have everything on the table that comes with the eTaker F1000. This is a plug and play setup. You have the user manual, the owner's guide, uh, basically goes through the input and output specifications, tells you how to change the charging speeds and also walks you through the vibration detection mode, which will turn this on and off as your vehicle is moving. Right here you have a charging cable. It goes from the output of the converter to the input of a power station. Now this has XT60 on both ends. So obviously this is designed to work with the eTaker power stations or any other power station that has XT60 on it. Now, if you don't have XT60 for your charging input, you could probably purchase an XT60 to MC4 and then use your power station's solar charging cable. Should work just fine. Now, as for connecting it up to the battery, you have everything included here. You have 10 feet of eight gauge wire. This has an XT90 connection on it and ring terminals. You have wire loom protector that goes on top of that. And then you have a 50 amp uh, fuse that connects up to your starter battery. So um, with all that, this is plug and play. It will connect up. Now keep in mind, you do not want this in your engine bay. This is not waterproof. So you do have to move it into your vehicle cab or into the back of the truck. Now being that this is eight gauge wire and it's 10 feet long and this pulls around 40 amps, you probably will get a little bit of heat buildup and resistance. Um, so you're gonna get a little power loss through this stock cable at the full 500 watt setting. At the 300 and 400 watt setting should be just fine, but you will see just a little bit of power loss through this cable on the 500 watt load. Just be aware, it's not quite enough to get to the back of your truck or SUV if you need that much. You will have to purchase your own wiring or extend onto this. Now I would recommend using six AUG cable so that you can get to the back of your truck if needed or the back of your SUV and not get any voltage drop. Now I'm sure a bunch of you are curious about the pricing for the eTaker F1000. You've already spent a lot of money on your power station and adding additional accessories definitely stacks up quick. Now on Amazon, this is currently priced at $219 with prime shipping. And I also looked on their website. On their website, it's priced at $299. So it is more expensive on their website. I would definitely recommend picking it up from the most affordable source. So make sure you shop around uh, before making a purchase. Now, how does this stack up against other options that are currently available? With this one being $219, there is a more affordable option. It's the Pecron 500 watt car charger, but it definitely doesn't do what this one does. It only has one input and it only takes power from your alternator and charges up your power station. Now this one, because it has dual inputs, it allows much higher charging if your power station is capable and you have the ability to plug in solar and car charging at the same time. So in my opinion, I do feel like this is quite a nifty product and for some people, it's definitely worth the extra cost. Now there is one other option um, from EcoFlow. It's a proprietary device. It only works with EcoFlow power stations. So if you have an EcoFlow power station, you might wanna look into it, but it's priced at around $399 on sale. And it, uh, it does a bit more. It's kind of a bi-directional charging option. So it will uh, take power from your alternator battery and charge your power station, but then you can reverse it in case you have a dead battery. You can take power from your power station and charge your dead battery, so that's kind of cool. It's really exciting to see all these different products uh, coming out and uh, the different features that they have. I love being able to test these and see how they perform. So if you guys have any other products that you've seen, recommend them down in the comments section and I'll definitely take a look. Well, that's gonna do it for this particular video. Thank you, eTaker, for sending this out for me to test on the channel. Super interesting product. And did you guys know that eTaker also has some interesting power stations that they make? If you guys are interested in seeing those tested on the channel as well, make sure you throw a comment down below. And if there's enough interest, maybe I'll review one of their models. Now, I really appreciate you guys sticking around to the end of the video. I would recommend a couple of other videos that you can check out. They're gonna be kind of similar to this one. Also, if you have questions about wiring this up or questions about solar panels or batteries or anything else like that, I do have a consulting service where you can get in direct contact with me. I'll include that down in the video description. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one.